There is something that must be said. And I'm going to say it today. Donald Trump will never be sent to jail. He will never be convicted. These prosecutions have been a disaster. There is only one way to get rid of Donald Trump. Fannie Willis can't do it because she screwed up and because she lacks integrity. The American people must end this nonsense. The American people must rebuke Donald Trump. Donald Trump is calling for violence in our nation, and we must say no. 227 days remain until the American people will make a decision that decides the destiny of the United States. It is March 22nd, and this is the warning. There is something that must be said about the consequence of the prosecutions, both civil and criminal, that are taking place against Donald Trump during this election year of 2024. That is now perfectly clear. The fact of the matter is, Donald Trump is not above the law. No man, no woman in America is above the law. This is a nation that has no king, no emperor, no Caesar. The rule of law is supreme. The United States of America overthrew a king and replaced the king with the American Constitution. Across American history, 45 different men have raised their hand and sworn an oath of 35 words to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. It's the presidential oath, the only one prescribed in the Constitution of the United States. And there has only ever been one president who has so thoroughly desecrated it, trampled upon it, as Donald Trump. He ended the peaceful transition of power in the United States. There is no question that he is a serial abuser of people, of women. There is no question that Donald Trump is lawless, but he always has been. And now we have come to a fork in the road that must be talked about openly and directly. These prosecutions against Trump are a political disaster for the opposition that politically opposes Trump and wants to keep him away from the White House, wants to keep him out of power for the safety of the world, the security of the United States, and the future of our children. Should Donald Trump be narrowly elected in November, he will take to the stage as president-elect on the evening of the election or sometime in the morning hours, and he will begin a speech and during that speech, he will have an opportunity to thank people for his MAGA resurrection. Of course, the first person at the top of that list will always be Kevin McCarthy, the defenestrated and disgraced former House Speaker who denounced Trump's insurrection, but very quickly found himself in Mar-a-Lago standing next to Trump, rehabilitating him because he wanted and craved and needed those small dollar donations that Trump can generate from his enormous, sophisticated grift machine. And there is no person who will deserve more fat and there is no person who will deserve more thanks than Fulton County, Georgia's corrupt, disgraced, and disgraceful prosecutor, Fannie Willis. When Fannie Willis asked for her job, when she went to Georgia voters, she ran on ethics and integrity. Her lack of both 
could well be the reason Donald Trump makes it back into the White House. Let's talk politics. What has always been true about Trump is that he is fueled by grievance and resentment and victimization. Donald Trump plays the victim better than any American who is alive. He is a virtuoso victim. And it works for him. Let me try and explain this as simply as I can. This morning, I am 53 years old. I believe I was 10 or 11 when I received the Art of the Deal board game under a Christmas tree. Because I grew up in northern New Jersey, Donald Trump has been part of my life since I was a child. His accent, his bluster, it is implanted in my frontal lobe. Like everybody who grew up in the New York tri-state area in the 1980s. Donald Trump is full of shit at a level that exceeds comprehension. But he has succeeded through an NBC television program and through 50 years of nonsense in convincing people that in fact, he is one of America's most successful billionaire moguls. We live in the United States of America. Taking someone's property, their things, confiscating them, strikes most Americans as deeply unfair. When the news plays out, the average American, white or black, male or female, young or old, sitting at home, doesn't make distinctions between the Georgia case and the New York case and the federal case, all of which, by the way, are failing under the incompetence of federal prosecutor Jack Smith, New York prosecutor Alvin Bragg, Georgia prosecutor Fannie Willis. I have news for Attorney General Letitia James. Donald Trump doesn't care about Trump Tower. He doesn't want to live there anymore. He wants to live in the White House. And the consequence of confiscating his property months before a presidential election is going to help him get there. There's an irony in all of this when you think about the collapse of American democracy about the threat. Of course, Trump is primarily responsible, but what helped him along on the way to be in position to take power? Of course, there is cynicism and hollowness. The Congress of the United States is filled by people like Lindsey Graham, who believe in nothing but being in the room. Everywhere, there are hustlers and grifters looking to get their cut. But in the end, the force, ironically so, that will propel Trump forward are lawyers, American lawyers. And of course, there is some irony in that will lose the country to its lawyers and their arrogance and their stupidity. And in the case of Fannie Willis, her corruption. There is something that must be said, and I'm going to say it today. Donald Trump will never be sent to jail. He will never be convicted. These prosecutions have been a disaster. There is only one way to get rid of Donald Trump. Fannie Willis can't do it because she screwed up and because she lacks integrity. The American people must end this nonsense. The American people must rebuke Donald Trump.
Donald Trump is calling for violence in our nation, and we must say no. Donald Trump is calling for retribution, and we must say no. Donald Trump is a practitioner of cruelty, and we must say no. Donald Trump has invited the world's most dangerous dictator to invade European nations who share our values. And we must say no. The American people, 330 million of us in 2024, comprise together more than half of the 700 million Americans that have ever lived since the beginning of the United States on July 4th, 1776. Liberty, freedom has been fought for. A million Americans have died so that I could look into this camera today and say what it is that I wish to say without fear of being prosecuted, being jailed, or being killed. That is what this election is about. Donald Trump does not believe in American values. He does not believe in American democracy. He does not believe in decency, and he does not believe in the Bill of Rights. He does not believe that you should have freedom of speech. He does not believe that you should have freedom of conscience. And his Christian nationalist supporters do not believe you should have freedom of worship. The Trump coalition is complex. It is multifaceted. There are many different competing toxic elements, some of them that contradict each other, that swirl around Trump competing for their chance to have a piece of political power. And what they share is a passion for a dogma of control. Trump is running on a platform of subjugation, a stripping away of rights for Black people, from women, from every vulnerable population in the United States whose freedoms have come late and have been hard fought and won with great pain and difficulty. All of those Americans are at risk from a Trump presidency. Think about something for a second. The man who is likely to be Donald Trump's chief of staff, only because he could never be confirmed by the U.S. Senate to be attorney general, is Stephen Miller, an extremist of the highest dimensions. He asked in the Oval Office where Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill would meet in the middle of the fight against Nazism, whether the armed forces of the United States could open fire on wooden boats off the California coast, killing men, women, children. The Republican nominee running for the North Carolina superintendent of schools has a Twitter account where she has called for assassination of Obama, of Biden, of her political opponents. Let me be clear about something. Any time in human history, 100% of the time, there have been people in the era before they took political power who promised to kill their opposition, they did it. There is no group of people who made that promise ever who have failed to deliver on it. And the rhetoric of violence is in the air everywhere in America. MAGA politicians routinely talk about the retribution about the punishment and about the chaos to come. 
Let me ask you a question. Do you want to kill somebody because they believe taxes should go up? Do you want to kill somebody because they believe spending should be cut? Do you understand as an American that the fundamental value of this country is dissent? It is the right to speech, to think, to pray, to love whoever you want. All of that is at risk because of this autocratic movement teeming with madness and the rhetoric of violence. Donald Trump is a fascist. That word has meaning. It has a definition. And he fits it. How is it that a fascist, an open fascist, could conceivably be elected president of the United States? Well, the answer to that question will be rather simple to sort through. The answer ahead of time will be this. Because he was able to play the victim while simultaneously portraying himself as the strong leader. There's something to understand about Donald Trump. And if you cannot hold these two contradictory thoughts in your head at the same time, then it is impossible to understand Donald Trump's political appeal. It means you don't get it. And my great fear is the overwhelming majority of people around Joe Biden do not understand this. They don't get it. Donald Trump is simultaneously two things. He is the most prolific liar ever in the history of American politics, while simultaneously also being the most honest president we've ever had. He speaks simple truths with the wisdom of the drunk at the end of the bar. He is our malignant and malevolent Archie Bunker. And when he speaks, millions and millions of Americans are able to understand what he's saying, even though few in Washington can. And what he's saying is, the game is rigged. It's corrupt. And I know the corruption because I am corrupt. And I've played that game and I've won that game. And those people, those people who run the institutions that have created the economic circumstances in America, where 40% of the country doesn't have $400. The people who have sent a generation of Americans to war and deployed the American military into more than 100 countries. What Donald Trump is saying and what enough Americans are hearing for him to win is that those people are not on your side, but I, Donald Trump, am. It's a lie, of course, but it's an effective one. The evidence that Trump is fighting, doing, taking a stake for you is the fact that the government which people disdain, is confiscating his property, his things, his iconic branded things. And the amazing part about it is the media believes that will hurt Trump. It's not going to hurt Trump. It will elect Trump because we live in America. And there's a sensibility about what is fair and about what is right. Every one of these prosecutors, before jumping into this fight, had an absolute 
obligation to look into the mirror and to contemplate the principle of restraint. Just because they could, should they? What these prosecutors have collectively done in the name of the rule of law is fuel Trump and put him into a position where if the election were tomorrow, he's going to win. Let me tell you something. There is nobody sitting around the Trump campaign team who is worried about these prosecutions. Nobody. They understand it is his fuel. They understand it will help him, not hurt him. And now the latest in all the news media is that Trump doesn't have the money to pay the bonds and that at the RNC, he's going to grift the money. Really? This is news? The entire Trump operation has been a fundraising grift from day one. There is only one group, one force, that can tell Donald Trump that nine years of insanity and chaos are over. And it's the American people. And there's only one candidate who stands as an option. And that's Joe Biden. This isn't a complicated matter. A yes for Joe Biden means America endures. A yes for Donald Trump throws that proposition into question. We live in one of the most corrupt eras in American history. What Jack Smith did at the federal level is try to jam a criminal prosecution with 92 counts through in an election year. It is clear here at the end of March, he has failed. So should Donald Trump be standing on the stage on election night, thanking the people who helped elect him? Jack Smith deserves a thank you. And Alvin Bragg deserves a thank you. And Fannie Willis deserves a thank you. We will have been undone by arrogant, reckless prosecutions by unworthy men and women. Here's the thing about Fannie Willis. When she looks in the mirror in the morning, she should understand what she sees looking back is another version of Trump, another corrupt official with no judgment and whose lack of judgment and probity has helped fuel an extremist movement that threatens the future of the entire nation. Shame on her. These prosecutors had an absolute obligation to conduct themselves pristinely perfectly. Did they not have a lick of self-awareness? Does Fannie Willis not comprehend the stakes? Or does Fannie Willis say, if I do this, maybe I can get elected mayor or governor? Her ambitions and her lack of integrity have boosted the most dangerous American who has ever lived. A man who has screwed over every little guy he's ever worked with because of the corruption and the incompetence of these prosecutions now gets to play the victim. And he gets to appeal to millions of Americans who say, I understand what it's like to be stepped on. They've abetted his con. This is a presidential election. Superman will not be arriving from Krypton to save us. 
Abraham Lincoln will not be returning from the dead to inspire us. There is only one force, one group that will matter, that will determine the outcome. And it is the American people who go to vote. What to do about Donald Trump is in our hands, not the prosecutor's hands. And all of this insanity that has played out for years on television, the hordes of lawyers sitting around tables on MSNBC, talking about the indictment of Trump, the jailing of Trump, the rule of law. Understand this. Donald Trump isn't ever going to jail. He will never be convicted by a jury. And there was no chance that 92 indictments issued in late 23 would be tried and adjudicated by election day in 24. This lack of restraint and judgment and discretion has been devastating. Not for the preservation of the rule of law, but for the survival of the United States. Because the man that is being prosecuted doesn't care about the prosecutions. He will never face judgment because he will be in a position because of those prosecutions to pardon himself. These prosecutions have given millions of Americans an out card from their responsibilities. And their responsibility is to focus on the choice. No, Joe Biden is not Franklin Roosevelt. And it's offensive when his team tries to compare him to him. But he's a much better man than Donald Trump. Joe Biden is a man of integrity and compassion. Donald Trump is a person filled with cruelty. Donald Trump is a menace to the whole world. And he's had no better friend than federal and state prosecutors, particularly the incompetent and corrupt ones like Fannie Willis. Thank you for listening to my political commentary. If you like what you heard today, please also consider subscribing to The Warning, daily newsletter on Substack.